Good day, everyone. We're happy to be back with the latest ASEAN News. Singapore approves first Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine by the end of the year in Asia. Singapore became the first Asian country to approve Pfizer-BioNTech's coronavirus vaccine and it expects to start receiving shots by the end of the year. Prime Minister Lee Xiong Lung says in a national broadcast he will be among the early recipients in the city-state of 5.7 million people, which has one of the lowest fatality rates globally from the coronavirus. The government says it expects to secure enough vaccines for everyone by the third quarter of next year. The Health Sciences Authority, HSA, has approved the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine for pandemic use. The first shipment should arrive by the end of this month making Singapore one of the first countries to obtain this vaccine. We also expect other vaccines to arrive in Singapore in the coming months. If all goes according to plan, we'll have enough vaccines for everyone in Singapore by the third quarter of 2021. He adds the vaccines will be free, voluntary and given first to the healthcare workers and the elderly. My cabinet colleagues and I, including the older ones, we'll be getting ourselves vaccinated early. This is to show you, especially seniors like me, that we believe the vaccines are safe. We have decided to make vaccinations free for all Singaporeans and for all long-term residents who are currently here. The authority says Singapore also signs advanced purchase agreements and make early down payments on promising vaccines candidates, including those being developed by Moderna and Sinovac, setting aside more than 1 billion Singapore dollar or 750 million 621,100 US dollar for shots. So far, 29 people have died from the disease in Singapore. Most of more than 58,000 coronavirus cases in the city-state occurred in cramped migrant worker dormitories. An earthquake in Mindanao, Philippines, with magnitude 6.2. The German Research Center for Geosciences says an earthquake of magnitude 6.2 struck Mindanao in Philippines. Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology says on a Facebook alert that the epicenter about 16 kilometers in depth just 86 kilometers south of Sarangani in Davao Occidental in Mindanao region at around 7.21 a.m. A video share with Reuters shows water lapping in a concrete koi tank in Hagonoi, Davao del Sur, about 100 kilometers south of Sarangani. Other images on social media shows lights and hanging objects moving to the tremor. Based on the preliminary seismic data, the quake should have been widely felt by almost everyone in the area of the epicenter. It may have caused light to moderate damage. Maria Reza says the new allegations she faces for the second time are insane. Maria Angelita Reza, a Filipino-American journalist and author who heads a Philippine news website known for its tough scrutiny of President Rodrigo Duterte, refused to enter a plea in the second cyber libel case she faces as she says the charges against her is ludicrous. I, it, the irony is I'm being, I'm supposedly facing a charge of cyber libel. But the charges themselves are libelous to a working journalist, right? So this shouldn't be allowed. I will take this all the way to the end and we will win it because it's ludicrous. Ressa, a Time Magazine Person of the Year in 2018, has faced a series of lawsuits that she says amount of the intimidation against her and other journalists in a country previously known for upholding press freedom. Businessman Wilfredo Kang had filed a new cyber libel case against Ressa, accusing her of sharing screenshots of 2002 article linking her to a criminal report. Kang's lawyers did not talk to the reporters after the hearing. In June, Ressa was convicted of libel over 2012 article that linked Kang to illegal activities. She faces up to six years in jail but is appealing the ruling. She also faces several other cases including tax offenses and violation of foreign ownership rules in media. She has said the cases are a form of harassment due to her news site critical reports on Duterte's bloody war on drugs, during which more than 5,900 suspected drug dealers and users have been killed in anti-narcotics operations. Japan registers new COVID-19 cases in high critically ill condition. 
Japan reports high of severely ill patients with the coronavirus as new cases continues to spread across the country, according to data cited by Japan Broadcasting Corporation, popularly known as Nippon Hoso Kyokai. The country registers 2,431 new daily cases and 53 new deaths as of 2030 local time, bringing the total tally to 184,743, with the death toll reaching 2,702. Japan now have 592 COVID-19 patients in critical conditions, the highest since the epidemic outbreak in the country. Prime Minister Yoshida Suga announces that Japan will halt its domestic travel subsidy scheme, known as GoTo, from December 28 to January 11. Catholic Church in Indonesia decorates Christmas trees with masks and hand sanitizers. A Catholic church in Indonesia decorates a Christmas tree with protective masks and hand sanitizers as a way to spread awareness of COVID-19 in the festive season as the country's daily death toll hit a record high. Marcus says the tree makes with intention of making people more aware of the importance of maintaining health protocols. Marcelinus Harri Suanto of the parish of the Catholic Church of Christ the King in Indonesia's second largest city, Surabaya, tells Reuters, starting with a bamboo skeleton, the church's followers and the local Muslim community decorates the tree with hundreds of colorful donate masks and hand sanitizers. Christmas is a public holiday in Indonesia, which the world's largest Muslim population, but it's only celebrated by around 10% of its 270 million people. The government urges the public to avoid celebrating Christmas and New Year in public places due to rising COVID-19 cases. Data from the National COVID-19 Task Force shows the country reports a record daily death toll of 221, bringing the total number of deaths in the Southeast Asian nation so far to 19,880. Indonesia is the nation of Southeast Asia with the highest number of confirmed coronavirus cases at 664,930. Thailand concern about the smog can cause a coronavirus pandemic. Thailand's capital Bangkok and major river Chao Phraya are shrouds in hazy smog, increasing health worries for people who are already coping with the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. I think a pollution expert needs to be brought in to tackle this problem because just reducing the use of motor vehicles sounds a bit difficult the government should think about other environmental measures to prevent it. It affects my daily life because every time I walk outside, my nose and neck feel, and when I cough, people get suspicious that I might have COVID-19. According to the Bangkok Metropolitan Air and Noise Pollution Office, 13 districts in the city are affected, with its midday air quality readings ranging from 38 to 116 micron cubic meter. The office says it expects levels of the dust particle PM2.5 to drop, but expect they will still exceed the healthy level. Spells of polluted air in Bangkok are usually worst during the dry season every year, a tribute to rapid urban development as well as agriculture burning in surrounding provinces. A hundred Santas take part in parade against child abuse in Tokyo. Harley Davidson bikers, dressed in Santa Claus costumes, rode through the streets of central Tokyo for their annual parade against child abuse, saying more children are vulnerable in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. The parade, followed by a toy run to donate toys to kids, is a global tradition around Christmas time. In Tokyo, the event is held by members of Harley Santa Club, founded in 2008. At the parade, Biker says this year's event meant more because more children are vulnerable to domestic violence during the coronavirus year. It is very likely now that parents will take the stress out on their children after losing their jobs. So I think, particularly during the pandemic, we have to do the parade. The Daily Asahi Shimbun reports the number of child abuse cases in Japan per month rose up to 20% between January and March versus the same period last year, as more families spent time at home because of the pandemic. The number of reports to child abuse cases was a record high last year. Normally, hundreds of motorcyclists take part in the parade. 
but because of the coronavirus only about 100 rode this year. Still, riders proudly rode their engines to bring Christmas joy to kids living in children's homes. Riders plan to visit four homes in Tokyo this year to donate toys and candy to about 400 children. California veterans receive vaccination as immunization in Los Angeles, including one veteran from Vietnam. A group of veterans in Los Angeles are among some of the first Californians to receive a COVID-19 vaccination. As the United States expands its rollout of the newly approved Pfizer-BioNTech coronavirus vaccine, the Veterans Affairs Greater Los Angeles Healthcare System began administering the vaccination of the COVID-19 to the frontline healthcare employees and Army veterans living in long-term care facilities considered to be higher risks from the virus. Well, I was one of the first ones, so I guess so I made history. I think I won the lottery. Didn't expect to be this way. I thought I wouldn't go home and then wait in line like everybody else. But we're lucky we're in the VA. It feels just regular, like a shot. We're just like the flu shot. You know, you didn't feel it or nothing. So it's, uh, I'm kind of glad that I got it. Distribution of the vaccine developed by Pfizer Incorporation and German partner BioNTech SE began on Monday, December 14, three days after it won U.S. emergency use authorization, opening a new front in a battle against the pandemic, claiming more than 2,400 U.S. lives a day. T today was a, an historic day for us. We launched our COVID-19 vaccination program for both veterans and our employees. We administered a total of 15 vaccinations to veterans and employees today. We're prioritizing our veterans and our employees who are either at the greatest risk for complications from COVID-19, our veterans living in congregate living arrangements, in our nursing home, in our domiciliary, and all those who care for them, all the doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals throughout our system who care for our most vulnerable veterans who may live in close quarters. What it means for them and what it means for us is the beginning of, of the end of the pandemic. What it means for us and for them is protection against infection. We know that the shot, that the immunization takes two shots, one given today, one given three weeks later. But we also know that beginning within, three week, within a week after the first shot, many individuals start to have some protection. Having this protection is so important for us right now as we're at this peak moment of our pandemic with a surge of activity in our communities, with our hospital full, all the hospitals throughout Southern California full of patients with COVID-19 and other conditions, we need to do something to break the chain, to break the cycle. And what we can do is to immunize as much as possible, vaccinate our veterans and our employees. The United States' rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine will see hundreds of thousands inoculated in a mass immunization expect to reach the general public in the coming months. American families struggle as Christmas nears amid COVID-19. Families in the United States are struggling to salvage the holiday season as Christmas draws near amid the surging COVID-19 virus. Even with COVID-19 vaccines starting to reach those who need, Christmas in the United States is going to look very different this year. Irving First Church of the Nazarene, outside of Dallas, Texas, will usually be the beating heart of its community. But this year, the church won't be holding any offline events after the church board decided it's not safe to gather during the pandemic. Pauline and Carl Haynes are longtime members of the congregation. They have been staying home as much as they can this year, cut off from their tight-knit community been a member here since 1979 and uh, it's just family just I feel like it's family sometimes I cry they are still hoping to spend Christmas with their daughter son-in-law and grandson though despite the threat of the virus pastor Stephanie Henderson says they have lost two members of the congregation in 2020 not directly from COVID-19 but the pandemic still constitutes the reason why they couldn't say goodbye properly both of those people, in the middle of July, in the middle of the pandemic, we were we were not able to come together to celebrate their lives in the way that we traditionally would have. So that's where, um, especially around the holidays, these are the first holidays for those families without these people. Now, in the build-up to Christmas, people are queuing up with their trunks open to get vital supplies in the nearby city of the Fort Worth to feed their families for a week. 
The Tarrant Area Food Bank says it is now serving 40% more families than it's before the pandemic began. It is a reminder of the devastating economic impact of COVID-19, all adding up to bleak midwinter for so many families. Visitors and cats dressing up like Santa Claus in a cafe with Christmas decorations. A cat cafe in Seoul is allowing visitors to cuddle up with around 130 feline friends, some dressed up in red and white Santa costumes, ready to wish people a Mew White Cat Mass. Park Seo Young opened the Cat Garden Cafe in 2016 to take in cats' rescues off the streets or that are the subjects of failed adoptions, a situation that has worsened this year. According to the South Korea's Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, the number of abandoned pets increased about 3.7% in the first half of 2020 compared to the same period last year. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Welcome to Cat Garden! With many people staying at home, more people are adopting cats. But at the same time, more people abandon pets as the coronavirus situation worsens. Whenever I hear about such news, it really hurts me. Each cat comes here with their own special story. When they are abandoned, cats live around 15 years. So if people want to adopt them, they should take responsibility to the end. Some visitors say the concept is helping boost spirits amid the latest wave of the coronavirus pandemic. Especially this year, it is hard to feel the festive atmosphere. But it was great to see cute cats wearing Santa suit and feel like Christmas is nearing. The Cat Garden Cafe has been hit this year. The cafe used to have about 100 visitors a day, but that has recently dropped by about a third. Park says a special feast is on the cards for the feline Santas over the festive period, a chicken breast party. And that's all for today. Have a happy holiday, enjoy, stay safe and see you.